Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Play Shadowrun Returns. I'm John Markley, and with me once again is Nick Wynn. Hello. Shadowrun Returns was a game made in... I'll put the year of release in, in post so I don't sound dumb. But it was really, it was made at least a year or two ago. It was, um, <coughs> it's actually created by, uh, via Kickstarter. Um, now Nick, are you familiar with Shadowrun at all? I'm more familiar with it as a... It was a tabletop, right? Yes. Tabletop RPG, yeah. I'm more familiar with it in that setting, but it's, it's kind of like cyberpunk a little bit? It's it's a weird... It's this kind of cyberpunk fantasy hybrid, as which, right. we'll get, which we'll get into in a bit. It's created by Jordan Weissman and of uh, FASA Corporation in 1989. Weissman, the original game was, I mean, as a uh, tabletop RPG, and this game was oh. also... What? Fast. FASA, the people who developed the um, Battlemech ba franchise. Battle, yeah, they created Battletech, and uh, well, and, I, and actually, he he was the co-creator in addition to Shadowrun, also of Battletech, and I think Crim and Crimson Skies. Radical. And Jor Jordan Weissman is actually he's done a remarkable amount of stuff in his career in a variety of fields. He's like I said, he spearheaded this Kickstarter campaign to create a new uh, video game, which I was very excited about because I've never played the tabletop RPG. But I was a big fan of both the Super NES and Sega Genesis Shadowrun video games, which were completely different from each other, but they were both quite cool. Yeah. And and you know they had a lot of atmosphere, and the world was you know unusual and interesting. And also keep in mind that like, like weird ass genre mashups are like you know fairly common today. You know, right? They weren't as common in 1989. So back then the idea of like like this combination cyberpunk high fantasy world was pretty out there. Now, okay, now here's the different, uh, campaigns. It, this is the, the one it comes with, the Dead Man's Switch. In the urban sprawl of the Seattle Metroplex, the search for a mysterious killer sets you on a trail that leads from the darkest slums to the city's most powerful megacorps. You'll need to tread carefully, enlist the aid of other runners, and master powerful forces of technology and magic in order to escape from the shadows of Seattle unscathed. All right, now, yeah, Seattle is sort of... I mean, there's other places, but Seattle is sort of like the classic Shadowrun setting. Hmm. Shadow... S S Seattle of the 2050s. Although the in-game timeline now extends, I think, to, like, to 2070s or something. But but this is set in, like, sort of the classic era. This is, like, 2054, I think. Which is not part of the United States anymore, by the way, because the United States does not exist in 2054. We'll get into that. Oh, shit. D this is the, uh... You know, just difficulty setting. We'll play normal. Create your character. Be male. Now, check your race, right? Right. Be human. Elf. Dwarf. Orc. Troll. Now, the obvious question some of you may be asking is, why are there elves and orcs in a cyberpunk game set in the 2050s? Basically, the premise of Shadowrun is that the world goes through these uh, great these cycles of magic where the power of magic in the world like rises and declines, right? Right. So like right now, you know, here in our world now, it's currently, you know, at a low point, but eventually it swings in in the game universe. Eventually, it, it in uh, 2011, keep in mind, this was originally made in 1989, so that was, you know, the future. But in 2011, the, uh, the world underwent an event called the Awakening in which magic returned to the world, essentially. Uh, magical powers came to exist, and some children started being born with strange features that eventually would be, I call, known as uh, elves and dwarves. Okay. okay. And all sorts, and you know, various fantastical creatures returned. Now, the the fan, the characters, they're pretty. They're basic. They're roughly, you know, what you'd expect from, you know, like the standard. They fit pretty well with, you know, standard fantasy archetypes. You know, elves are short, squats. I mean, dwarves are short, squat, strong guys. Elves are tall, thin, graceful. Everybody or, wants to be them. Or, you know, orcs are big, burly, tusked guys. Hmm. Although, although orcs, orcs and trolls and such, I mean, they're not like monsters in the sense of like a way a Tolkien orc is. I mean, they're still, they're people. Hmm. Orcs and trolls appeared in a second event in 2021 when... People just when about ten percent of the world's population just spon started spontaneously mutating into other races, which you know scared the crap out of everyone, and gave rise to you know more of these what are called metahumans. And so this you know needless to say kind of threw the world into chaos. 
but let's see. What should we be? Uh, why don't I just go with human? For yeah. A okay, human. All right. Now archetype. These are different. They're di these are different cl character classes, sort of. But once you create a character, you can you can up uh you can customize them any way you want. So you don't you're not locked into what you start with. Let's see. And there's also, oh, but okay, here are the archetypes. The street samurai. A f f f f it's a freelance operatives who follows a code of street honor. They're learned in the ways of the traditional samurai warrior and in the practices of modern combat. Samurai sell their skills for profit and work to take out the dishonorable scum that seem to breed in the urban sprawl. Attributes. <laughs> Key attributes, body and strength or quickness. Key skill, close range, or range combat. Mage. Mage is specialized in the casting of spells. Surprise, surprise. Um, they're, 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 they're very, spells, you know, give you various effects. There's offensive, there's healing, you know, stuff like that. Decker. Deckers use a cyber, jet, cyber deck to jack into the Matrix, the worldwide information grid and computer network. Um, which is, this, this game was heavily, you know, like a lot of cyberpunk, cyberpunk it was heavily influenced by things, by uh, stuff like, like the well, works of uh, William Gibson, Neuromancer, stuff like that. So in, the, in this, the Matrix, which is like their version of the internet, it's like this sort of full, immersive environment. All right. Nice. Shaman, they draw their, uh, also have magic that they believe comes from a, like, totemic spirit. They have, they have, uh, different types of powers than mages. They can also summon spirits into battle, which is a pretty cool ability. Rigor. Rigor, whoop. Riggers use cybertech to jack their mind into and control small robot-like vehicles called drones. Which is kind of cool, so basically it's... They're, they're, they're the class that have, like, you know, it's little small, like, hel helper units, you know what I mean? Right. Like the equivalent of, like, guys who can su- kind of like the equivalent of guys who can, like, summon creatures or whatever, I guess you might say. Okay. Uh, physical adept. Physical adepts are magically, apt magically active characters who focus their magic internally to develop to their utmost potential, physically, mentally, and spiritually. As adepts unlock new abilities, they become honed physical machines, using their magic to enhance their close combat abilities. So, ma- Magic cyberpunk ninjas, basically. <laughs> and they have their own set of supernatural abilities. But we're going to uh, customize. We're going to just go none. Now we can customize our appearance. There's a bunch of preset faces that then will automatically change. Wait a minute. I just realized, yeah, I, ac I, accidentally, pre I ac accidentally picked female. Yeah. All right. Shazam! So, like, here's some of the standard ones. Ah, uh, yes, the tri light over one eye. Hey, it's Riddick! <laughs> Riddick with hair. Ow. Jason Statham. <laughs> Jason, Jason Statham is the T-800 in... It's one of those guys from Dune. Huh. That guy's very smug looking. Yes. Oh, that guy's got like Norse runes tattooed onto his face. Huh. I assume tattooed. Maybe they were carved. Who knows? That could be your story. It's. No, no, now we, now we know. It's. He's got like Macho Man Randy Savage glasses. <laughs> Well, from where I'm sitting, it looked for a second like Ultimate Warrior paint. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like this guy. Yeah, he's got glasses. Ah. Yes. I do appreciate that, like, I know that this is supposed to be generic art, but <laughs> a lot, some of these faces just seem to be copy, you know, the eyes. And no, some, you know, some of them are, are definitely supposed to be the same guy, just with different accessories or whatever. Like, here's this guy, he's like a shaman or mage guy, then it's the same guy as like a, you know, cyber, high-tech cyberware guy. I kind of like this one. Yeah. But we have further customization options, as you can see, we can change skin, like, change skin color. Oh, nice. We can change uh, hair style. If you want to be Dragon Ball Z guy, I guess you can. Look. 
You can be the bald, aging hipster. <laughs> and have this. I'm trying to think of a better ter thing to describe this than girl hair, but I'm coming up short. Whoa! That's, a, that's quite a man. Mohawk. Ooh, bigger mohawk. There's one I like. I appreciate the different variety of mohawks this game offers. Well, you know, that sort of cyberpunk aesthetic. Thrill as I cycle through hair options. I kind of like this hair. Alright. Oh, and hair color, of course, is an option. Kind of like the dark hair. And, uh, we have different beard options. Whoa. I'm going to change the color of the beard for a second just so it's easier to see against the black background. <laughs> how much are you able to, like, how much is, uh, are you able to see your character model? Because if I remember right, it's it's sort of like a. It's like isometric. Isometric. You can you can zoom in de to a decent amount. I mean, it's okay. So is it like XCOM in that way? It is a little like XCOM, yeah. Whoa, that's a lot. That's a lot of beard. <laughs> it's like a Fu Manchu kind of look. Works. That's sort of a standard beard. Okay, I, okay, I like this. It's like 19th century mustache and like mutton chops. <laughs> I say good sir. <laughs> okay, that that I'm going with that. And oh no. There we go. Now, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine has kind of uh, ruined the mutton chop look for me. Uh, saddens, that saddens me. I don't think I'm gonna make it pink. Just go with the black hair, black hair. Okay. And the horns are an option, like, you know, if you're an orc or tr if you're a troll or possibly if you're, you know, uh, possibly an orc. I'm not sure, but... Okay. Continue to stats. Karma represents your exper the experience characters earn while running the shadows and achieving goals. Karma is used to improve abilities and skills. An attribute or skill rating can be increased by spending karma equal to the next increment of that rating. Thus, improving your body from 4 to 5 requires you to spend 5 karma points. You have some karma available now to customize. Okay. Available karma. 37. Now, there's the 6 basic stats. Body, quickness, strength, intelligence, wisdom, and... Not... No, will. And charisma. It's... You, the, the six stats are slightly derivative of the old D&D &D stats, which is probably why I just <laughs> instinctively called that wisdom. But basically, they're fairly self-explanatory, really. Body is... I've got to make my body ready. Yes. The body is, you know, your hit points. Quickness is your effects, like how much you can dodge and your ability to fire ranged weapons. Strength is how hard you can... is melee, is hand -to -hand, melee attacks and throwing stuff. Uh, intelligence controls, like, your ability with uh, uh, decking and, ri and rigging. Willpower is, like, resistant magic attacks and is the power you're, if you're a mage. Charisma is the power of uh, shaman spells. And also, like, in social situations. And um, and then they have sub-skills, like, that are dependent on them. So, like, see, spirit summoning? Mm -hmm. That's under charisma. So, like, to get your spirit summoning to four, say, your charisma would also have to be at least four. Um... And there's other sub-skill, you know, they have different subs- Like, your chi casting, that's what those physical adepts use. Spell casting, drone combat, drone control, uh, decking, throwing weapons, melee combat. And some things even have, like, sub-subtypes. Like, there's quickness, and then ranged combat is a subtype of that. Er, er is? And, and then, and then these, uh, wep- and then these weapon skills are a subtype of ranged combat. Pistol, submachine gun, shotgun, rifle. All right, I'm gonna be. I don't expect you to, you know, 
you know, thrill as I sit here silently, you know, cr mentally crunching some numbers to myself. So I'll give you a little more of the uh, backstory. Uh, basically, in the year 2010, and like I, which again was the future. Right. Um, in the year 2010, the Earth, the world is struck by this. The year before the awakening, the world is struck is struck by this devastating uh, plague called a uh, uh, virus, virally induced uh, toxic allergy syndrome. Hmm. Over, it starts in India, spreads worldwide. With it, after within a few years, it's it's killed two billion people. Which, 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 uh, which basically sort of sets the stage for the world being thrown into chaos and being such. What that combined with the you know the awakening is why the world is such a dramatically different place, like geopolitically. You know, whole nations rose and fell. So it killed two billion people in the span of a year. Uh, uh, not one year, more than one year, but there were actually two. There were two outbreaks of it, like oh. there was a second strain of it. But within a, only a couple years, it killed. Yeah, it killed, a, like a, you know, a significant population of the entire human race. Huh. And like I said, then the year later, the awakening happened when the first, you know, what would come to be no, realized where elves and dwarves were born. Although, well, well strictly speaking, that's not true. There actually were a few born earlier than that. Like going back, I think to the '80s, who were, but they weren't really recognized at the time as a whole new race because it just seemed like you know one or two kids with weird features. Um, I'm planning to make my guy sort of a. By the end of the game, you can you can kind of you don't you don't want to be a complete like a jack of all trades, but you can specialize you can kind of specialize in more than one thing. So I'm gonna go for like a like a street like a street samurai rigor combination, basically. That's the idea. Drone control. Ah, and uh, see the dr adding to the drone control, adding to drone combat. It gives you as you increase these things, you know, you can get individual, you know, boosts. So like here, add plus one to drone combat. Drone armor plus one. If I were to go two, it'd be drone accuracy plus five percent, percent, and and so forth. Now, uh, charisma. There's a special thing with charisma, where every two points of charisma, you get what's called an etiquette. All right? Which is basically, you can, well, here, I'll click it and show you. Choose an etiquette. Etiquette is about knowing how to behave in various social situations. The right etiquette can give you an edge in certain conversations. Choose an etiquette from the list below. Choosing etiquette does not cause karma, and each etiquette can only be chosen once. So basically, these unlock different conversation options in certain situations. They basically mean like, you, like, you know, you, uh, the etiquettes you pick, it means like you, um, you under, like you understand like how things work in those circles. You know how to talk to people. Sure. Like so, you know, corporate, security, gang, socialite, shadow runner, street, or academic. Suggestions? Uh, why not take a shadow runner? Okay, good idea. I had that in the first one. That among the other things, it sort of like helps you avoid getting screwed in certain situations. Because, like, you know, you know, you know the ins and outs of the shadow running world. Now, a shadow runner, shadow runners are basically like uh, mercenaries for hire. They um, they're hired by you know governments, major corporations, or just rich individuals to do like covert, plausibly deniable operations against their enemies. Whether it be sabotage, stealing data, destroying you know, assassination, abduction, all sorts of things. So they you know they they obviously do not move in normal social circles. Right. Do they, like, ever get hired for, like, security? Yeah. Yeah, some of the, yeah, some, you, they can be hired, they can be hired sometimes, they will get, move into, like, le legitimate jobs as, like, corporate security. Hmm. I'm gonna grab a bit of decking. Gonna equip Sony CTY. Mark, okay, mark target, decking, actually, it's mostly, you know, for when you're in the Matrix, but it actually does give a, uh, Ability you can use outside of it. Mark target increases your chance to hit enemies by ten percent. See. Okay. And then the. So, What's that? So meta game wise, yeah. having beaten it already, how much does uh, not specializing hurt you? Um. Well, you you don't you, you wouldn't want to spread yourself evenly across like all five all five areas. Right. That would cripple you. But you don't have to you don't you don't have to focus completely in just one. Like last time, when I played it through last time, I by the end I had pretty high. I was pretty high in both quickness and uh, willpower, with some respectable charisma as well. 
And I was like a combination like gunman mage with some shaman abilities. And because keep in mind the way the, remember the way experience uh, karma costs work is, you know, getting up getting um is going from one to two quickness costs two points, two to three costs three, three to four costs four, four to five costs five, and then like you know nine to ten costs ten. So it gets it gets more and more expensive as you go up. So you don't want to specialize too much because you kind of read you, 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 you there are like diminishing returns. Right. You know what I mean. And eventually, you might, if you're really specialized, you might get to the point, well, but, you know, you can have, well, I can have one more point of quickness for ten, or for the same amount, I could have, like, you know, two points of strength and two, two points of charisma and, you know, two of intelligence or whatever. You know, you don't, like I said, you don't want to specialize too much because it gets really costly. Okay. Yeah, int intelligence. So is there one stat like every character like, should always spec? Um, well, everyone, everyone, everyone benefits from body because right. the, be because that ba that determines how many hit points you have and increases your chance of of taking reduced damage when you're hit. Okay. So it doesn't really direct any particular craft affect any particular class's skills. Rather, any anyone who you know is in a position where they might be in the line of fire benefits from can benefit significantly from body. All right. Let's see here. Also, intelligence and charisma will both sometimes unlock additional conversation options. Actually, 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 for that matter, so will so will. Oh, the other stats as well, like strength. Like you're better at it. If you have a high strength stat, you're better at intimidating people. Will low stats have uh, options? I don't think so. All right. Now I don't make any claim that this character is ideally optimized, or you know that you should. Anyone reading this should follow in my footsteps. <laughs> in this or in anything else in life. Spirit summoning is cool. They're like basically at certain points, places in the game, there are places where you can summon, you know, well, as the name suggests, summon spirits that you can then control and make attack you. But the, they um, they gradually get uh, harder and harder to control, and will eventually escape your control entirely. And which can still be helpful if they're near your enemy, because like they may just like go. They'll just if they're out of control, they'll attack whoever's closest, which may well be your enemies. Different different uh, weapons have different you know b abilities as well. Well, I'll get into the special abilities of different weapons in the game later. I think we'll go maybe rifle. Rifle and uh, submachine gun. Let's say. Okay, so this is what we're going with. Body three, quickness three, ranged combat three, submachine gun one, rifle one, dodge one, strength one. Nothing in here. Intelligence four, just for the hell of it. Decking two, drone control one, drone combat one, willpower two, charisma two, shadow runner etiquette, and all right, confirm. Name your character. Many runners use a street name, handle, or working name. Names like Half Jack or Lady Z. Others stick with their given name or adopt a nickname. Please choose a name for your character. Okay, Nick. This is the name we're going to be hearing from other people address us by for the rest of the game, so we got to choose wisely. You know, in, in homage to my my Steam my Steam username, I'll just be Flandry. Agent Flandry. Should I Agent Flandry or just Flandry? Oh, uh, why not just Flandry? Just Flandry, yeah. All right. 